find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, welcome to Awesome Cast, the show where we get geeky, talk tech, social media, and more with the local nerds that use it right here in Pittsburgh, PA, for the most part. Uh, definitely tonight, I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, proprietor of podcasting, uh, purveyor of pods. I'm working on that one. Uh, <laughs> up here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Also with me on the line from his home command center is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. How you doing, sir? Pretty good. How are you? All right. All right. And also yeah. with us, joining us uh, for the first time in 2015, is oh, right. your Uncle Crappy that works for a uh, non-disclosed dead tree publication in the city. The uh, green one, not not the red one, but the green one. Oh yes, okay, the green one. <laughs> At Uncle Crappy on the Twitters, uh, Mike Pound. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Happy New Year. Happy well, happy to be here on the the uh, Sorgatron Media Empire. I started. I saw you started the Awesome Cast party uh, already. He's drinking away there. What what are you drinking for the for the beer fanatics out um, there? I started with something light, and I'll, I will show you that because I have one more can of that. I'm going to finish this one. This this is a monster. This is a huge archer from Anderson Valley in California, bourbon barrel aged Russian Imperial Stout. I didn't really pay attention to this until I opened the bottle. Thirteen and a half percent. So we were kind of talking about wine before Oof. we started. That's that's about uh, wine strength in. And I'm about halfway through that bottle, so I, I should be pretty entertaining by the time the show's over. Oh, this is going to be great. I can't wait. <laughs> um, of course, this is your awesome cast for the week. Uh, we do this here live every Tuesday about 6.30 p.m. Eastern time or so. Depends on how we're Good talking much. movies. Uh, our, our unfortunate co-host has a very uh, uh, deadline-specific job sometimes. I'm very familiar with that environment over there. Uh, so we try not to give him too much grief when he comes in a little late, but that's all right. It gave uh, it gave Uncle Crappy a, a little bit of a head start on the drinking. Um, you can also check us out at awesomecast.net, where you can find links for stuff we talk about, especially products. You can check out and support the show through affiliate links through Amazon.com. Uh, actually, just I know it's a little late with it, but I did get the link up there for the drone that we talked about last week, the starter drone, because um, I never remember it. And then I found it in the notes when I was setting up today. Uh, so go check that out. And there's a bunch of other products that we talked about over the week. And I have links to the shows where we talked about them. And most of the shows have um, time codes. So you can go in and find out exactly where we talked about it and, and get the lowdown on what's going on. You can also drop us an email with any thoughts, awesome things of the week, or anything else at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast. Find awesomecast on Facebook and Google+. And please subscribe and rate us whenever possible. Often, vote often, vote early, vote, vote often, vote, vote every day. YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. So let's get started with our awesome things of the week. And Chill, it looks like you got something spiffy going on here. Yeah, I do. Um, as a as a longtime iPad user, obviously, um, one of the things I'm always looking for is a better keyboard because I use my device a lot to respond to email or to do different things for work. Um, so I actually picked up the Zag Slimbook, and it's a newer, it, they have it for the iPad 2, or the iPad Air 2, the iPad Air, and a handful of other iPad devices. I'm trying to look at their website right now to see what other devices, and the Mini 2 and 3. Um, so one of the things that this device does extremely well that most other companies haven't figured out is... It allows you to take the iPad off the keyboard and kind of pull it apart for those of you watching the video. Um, it has extremely strong magnets to stick it back together. It'll click into place. You get a nice 135 degree angle off um, when tilting. Uh, and one of the things, the other things that I really like about it is if you pull it apart and you kind of flip it around, it gives you the ability to kind of use it as a video display. So you can just kind of set it there and it props the iPad up on a nice angle. Um, and it actually fully closed, the hinge closes in, in the reverse. 
um, with the iPad flipped around. Um, so it's kind of in a just book reading format so you can keep carrying your keyboard. Um, the keyboard, I will say, is a bit heavy. In fact, it is about the same weight as the Air 2. Hmm. Um, which the Air 2 is pretty light, but when you sacrifice that weight, you get, and I, I, I can't even believe, oh, I just started playing music. Um, I can't believe this, but they're, they're claiming um, two years of battery life. Wow. Um, so you shouldn't have to recharge the keyboard, and I, and I, I want to, I'm, I'm just not going to charge it and really see, but two years in between charges. I, I would be skeptical about two years. <laughs> Me too. Probably. But I, but I tell you what, even just listening to you with the, the magnets, that, that sounds substantial. That's, that's, that looks really nice. Yes. Um, so it's, it's ultra, it is, it is thin, but it's mm -hmm. dense. Okay. Um, and the other thing that I like about it is the keys you can turn on the backlight. So they are backlit for dark. So that would be, that would be which nice. Is nice. You get your typical um, iOS hotkeys along the top with your search and browser and um, lock the screen, um, that kind of stuff. Um, key spacing is actually extremely nice. Um, the keys are kind of soft um, to the touch. And obviously having the tactile feedback is nice. So, so far a day in, or three days in actually, I'm, I'm pretty darn happy. Um, and I'm not seeing much additional drain on the iPad's battery, which I've seen with some other other keyboards. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it has the, key, it has the uh, built in magnets too. So when you shut it, the iPad screen shuts off, which saves power too. Um, that's one of the things I saw on the clam case, it didn't always shut off the screen and the screen would stay active. Um, and unfortunately, while I really like the clam case design, um, the shell started to crack about a month in. Mm. Um, oh, wow. So that kind of bummed me out about that one. Um, but the, the other thing is, is like I said, the way they designed this is the, the iPad actually sits in a plastic shell as well, um, mm -hmm. which is, it's a, it's a decent plastic typical case um nothing on the front to cover it when it's not in the keyboard but it does it doesn't add any substantial weight to the device um when you don't have it attached to the keyboard which is nice so it's pretty lightweight so i will keep you posted on any other things i find with it we'll and check i'll let you know two years from now we'll check back in two my years. calendar <laughs> yeah see if i had to recharge it <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I'm setting up. I had a last minute kind of change up here. I realized, uh, uh, Uncle Crappy, what do you have here? I, I, I'm, 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 not, I'm debating whether or not to call this uh, actually an awesome thing because I'm a little bit dubious about how this will actually work. But it's, it's. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, we all, we all have, we all know people on Facebook like this. You know, you, you see a post from the onion, you see an, uh, something else that is an obvious satirical post. And we, we have friends that will leave comments like, this can't be real. Is this real? Is that really? Is this real? Um, Facebook, um, they, there was some discussion of them addressing this uh, a few months ago by marking satirical posts as such, at marking them as satire. Um, something that they announced on, on the, the Facebook's uh, newsroom blog today uh, is they're going to give users the ability to mark posts as, um, as not factual. Um, and, and, and at first blush, I think this is, a, you know, this is a good thing. It's going to save some trouble and, and perhaps uh, help out some folks who struggle with what might be real and, and what isn't. Um, I'm concerned, however, and this is, this is where my hesitation lies. I'm concerned about um, the, the people, the Facebook users uh, seem to be uh, less worried about expressing their, their you know, their, their opinions and their, their uh, political thoughts and, and beliefs. And I'm, I'm curious about how this is going to go when, when say, I see a post that I simply just I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. um, not, not something that I, that I think is going to be, uh, that I think is, is, is factually incorrect, but it's like, oh, that's, that's crap. I don't, I, don't, that, I don't believe that stuff at all. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe what, um, I don't agree with the, what the, what this article says. So do I go ahead and mark it as not factual? Um, I'm, I'm not sure how this is going to work. Uh, Facebook, to its credit, says it's, it's not going to remove these posts. It's not going to get into 
um, actual moderation and, and, and making determinations about whether or not posts are accurate. But they will if, if there is a preponderance of uh, people marking a post as as uh, as inaccurate or not factual. Um, they, Facebook will ding uh, whoever made the post, will, will ding the source so it, it, it uh, appears in fewer places. Um, I, I wanted to bring it up. I'm, I'm not again. I'm not sure this is an awesome thing or not. Um, it could be. Uh, it, it could also be a, a royal pain in the butt. Uh, but it, it's an interesting thing that, and it's interesting that Facebook is, is taking steps to address this. Um, and and I'm, I'm curious to see. I hopefully, we won't have to wait two years like when John's keyboard runs out of juice to find out how this goes. <laughs> um, uh, hopefully, they they it'll be interesting. I'm hoping to your point that it it isn't just people marking things as fakes or hoaxes, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of cause them to drop off. And you talked about the poster, if, if it is fake or a hoax, it, the, the poster would be dinged. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they have the same type of thing for the person that mismarks the, something that's that's factual I, I and they like, get dinged. I would like way. to see that as well. But I, 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 I have to think that that's not going to be the case since, I mean, this, this, uh, the, the post on the, on the Facebook blog says we are, we are not reviewing content. We are making and not making a determination on content's accuracy. So it doesn't sound like they're going to get into the business of, of you know, someone's going to be sitting there looking at this post and saying, okay, what, what does this say? Uh, we're not, Facebook is not doing any fact checking. Um, it's going to, it's going to let the, the, the users decide whether or not this is uh, a particular post is accurate or not. Um, and, and the potential for abuse there is, I, I, I think a very real thing. But the fact that Facebook generally is, is very <laughs> like you have an identity, like it's not mm -hmm. like, something else where where you can create and they're cracking down a lot of fake identities even the point where you know transgenders are having problems right so yeah. so yeah. so do you think that accountability is going to help kind of keep it from it keep that from happening maybe um i mean facebook has insane algorithms for this kind of stuff yes. Yes. um and of course we won't know until it doesn't work right um, <laughs> right i mean right. The, <laughs> ideally if this thing works well we'll never know about it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll, you'll, at some point you will, uh, you know, you'll, you'll wake up six months from now and realize, you know, I'm not seeing as much crap in, in, in my, in my stream. And, right. and why is that? And then we, I might remember this conversation. I might not. Um, and that's, that's ideally how, how it should work. Um, I, I'm just, I, I think I would still, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm unusual in that I look at Facebook and I think, okay, that's not real. Uh, this one satire and this one satire. There, there are clearly people who who who, uh, who struggle with those issues. Um, I I'd rather would make use of the mute button or, or unfollowing people. Um, that that seems to help more than than uh, than any kind of stuff like this. But but we'll see how this goes. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, it'll be interesting. I, I, I... They're creating a hell of an experience there, and I know there's been a lot of discussion about what they're doing, even for the advertiser side. It's like, well, okay, now we have to do what now to, for people to actually see us. Right. Um, so, no, I, I think I think uh, uh, they're trying to mold their environment and make sure there isn't a lot of crap going on, mm -hmm. um, which I think is great. You know, um, so we'll see, we'll see. Uh, I can't wait to see that button start to pop up. So yes, yes. But, um, I guess the biggest issue. I guess the biggest issue that, that comes to my mind is, is, is political issues, right? That, that's, and, and that's exactly where, and that's, that's the stuff. Um, that's the, that's the hot button stuff. That is where, right. that is the thing that, that causes me to, you know, to, uh, you know, turn off things that people who would otherwise be friends, um, or in, the, in a couple of cases, you know, I just, I just, I just don't want to, I don't want to see it. Um, and it's right. easy enough for me to, 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 to turn them off. Right. Also, um, also handy if you're tired of baby pictures. Yes. Yes. Also that. Um, but, uh, but it, it's, uh, that, that's where the abuse will come. And, yeah. and, and yeah. there are, there are people, um, I, I, I tend to hold my political beliefs pretty close to the best. Um, but, but, you know, we all, we all know people. Uh, who are vocal uh, and vocal on both sides, and those are the folks who will who will. Uh, I wonder if they have the opportunity. Um, you know, if you if you uh, take something that's posted from the Limbaugh show, or if you take something that's posted from the Daily Kos, um and, and market is inaccurate because just because you don't like what the what the what the post what what the content is. Right. Um, right. We'll see. So it's almost like it'll become a dislike button. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and geez, why can't Facebook do that? I mean, yeah, it can, it'd be a lot easier. <laughs> just, I, that, that's probably the most honest approach. I don't like this. Um, you know, and you can, you can sort of do that now, but it's, 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 uh, uh you know, you did have to go through a couple of different windows and it's get that, the you want. yeah, it's that granular approach, right? Yeah. It's like, Oh, okay, yeah. good. Why don't you, or, and, or even it'll ask you if say, I don't want to see this. I'm like, Oh, why is that? Mm-hmm. You know, and maybe that's where it comes from. Because I think one of, those, one of the selections is this is not a factual thing. Maybe they saw a lot of those, and maybe they're like, well, mm-hmm. maybe that should be a, a grander option, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that that sample brings something like this to the top. So mm-hmm. um, it's very really, very interesting to see. So um, hey, uh, while we're in this zone, I, I wanted yes. to follow up on an awesome thing. Uh, actually, I think it was App of the Week that you brought up, John. Um, I, I know we were conversing online. Uh, Duet display. That we used last week. Um, mm-hmm. I wonder if I can pull a picture up now. I'm thinking about it. Uh, but it's, it's the application is do, display.com It's about fifteen dollars. You, you download it on your iPad uh, for fifteen dollars, and, and, and you go to their site. You download a little zip file and put it put it on there. It puts a little bug in your system tray. It works on Macs, iPads. So, but you have to be tethered. So, and you saw I'm using this to kind of extend my desk space and really stretch out at coffee shops lately. <laughs> I'm sure I look ridiculous as I'm hooking this thing up um, and, and seeing how much space I'm taking up. But it's it works very really well. Um, you know, having the laptop and throwing it on, uh, throwing Tweet Deck over, or I've actually had a few uh, videos like sitting on my laptop. And I don't like the stream stuff in a coffee shop. I feel like that's kind of rude. You know, mm-hmm. the, especially if it's a, it's not a Starbucks that has crazy Google Internet. Um, so I'll just throw the video over there, even to the point where I'll, I'll, I'll put my 5S phone next to it and I'll throw the video on that and have it just sit next to my computer, just propped up a little bit. And then I, I have a little, little TV like, you know, in the corner of my eyes, I can sort of have on in the background while, while I'm working away. Um, it works really well. I do. It's not laggy. But the mouse doesn't feel as I don't know loose, you know. I, I, mm-hmm. there, there's like a mil, like a little bit of of, of cluginess <laughs> when you get your mouse over to that side. Uh, but generally, it works good. Like I don't I don't expect it to be a full on work area, um, and it works really well for me. So unfortunately, you can only connect one device at a time. So my now, vision. It, how does the touch screen thing work? Um, basically when you touch it, I didn't get too much into it to see if there's any gestures, but basically wherever you touch, your mouse just goes there. Okay. So okay. It, it's one of those. And I, I know I've dealt with this a little bit, like lo- going from log me into to team viewer, it, it handles your gestures to mouse ratio really differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of more towards the team viewer way of doing things, I guess. Um, okay. if you're familiar with that. Uh, so it's fine. Not terribly functional kind of nice to be able to reach over and, and click on on a thing and and have that kind of array kind of thing you you, you know me and my setups here i love arrays of screens in front mm-hmm. of me to feed me all this information uh here in the studio and, and just working in general so um but no it, it works out really well. i definitely recommend it if you think you can get some benefit about turning your ipad or an old ipad it would install an order version on my ipad one uh but it crashes every time i try to open it so, ah. Yeah, yeah. So, I was I was really hoping that just makes that a permanent iPad screen up on my desk upstairs, but alas. So, um, we uh, did you have a chance? Did you did you pick it up, Chilla? I didn't know you were I looking at it. Pick it up yet? Because I have to move some stuff around. I don't have any more monitor space. <laughs> I have just stack them. Yeah, th- I have two. I have a. 32 inch monitor and a 27 inch monitor and then off to the side of that i have the 13 inch air nice so to 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 go and do something i'd be using the space where my keyboard and mouse sit Mm -hmm. um or i'd have to run an extra long usb cable around so i'm gonna have to move some stuff around and see See you, what don't, I can come up you don't with. really work mobile, but I mean, what if you're like, I have a laptop and you're watching watching the kid and and you need that extra screen space downstairs, you know, I, I think that's and, more. And, that, and that's where it may come in handy. The, yeah. the one yeah. thing that's kind of tough is for work, I VPN into work from my MacBook and I run a virtual machine of Windows to do that, but it's still, that screen is not going to be any larger than the 13 inches I have to work with on the air. So mm-hmm. 
it, it'd be nice if I look to your point, like if I wanted to keep tweet deck up or something else at the same time when I'm downstairs. Um, but to expand the usable workspace, it may not be for, for work purposes, for leisure and enjoyment. It would right. definitely come in handy. Right. Um, also, we had a submission. Uh, Doug Durda, uh, should I drink that dot com is his podcast. Please go check it out. Uh, we were talking about beer earlier. He sent me this one. I guess they were looking at this at, at, at his workplace. Um, it's uh, be my eyes dot org. No weird spellings. It's be my eyes dot org. Um, and it's an app that will. Well, their tagline is lend your eyes to the blind. And, and that's basically what it does, it seems too. Um it actually, so a blind person has the app on their phone. And, you know, of course, you have whatever other assistance going on there. Um, and they send a request. And me, as a sighted person, has this on the other end. And uh, I'll receive a request. And I guess it just streams live video what they're looking at. And we get to convey what they're looking at. So you are literally, literally lending your eyes to, to this blind person to see what's going on. Is there a background check on this? Or? That's what that has to be, right? Yeah, that's, that's probably that's probably not a bad idea. It, it, and it's a really cool thing, though. I mean, if and, and the site mentions this, if the blind person is in in some place that's not familiar, mm-hmm. um, it, you know, it just uh, it matches you up with a with a volunteer, hopefully someone who's you know not going to make someone do something dumb, but uh, so so you can take a look around and and, and give them a hand getting where they need to be. Well, and, I, cause, and the only reason I bring it up is because I saw a picture of this, and the example that they were using was they were trying to read the expiration date on a thing of milk, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which if, if you lied to them, that'd be a pretty cruel cruel thing to do if, if they're, they then start yeah. drinking sour milk or something like that. So, that's, I, I mean, I, I would hope that people – wouldn't abuse this, but I would worry that it could get yeah, out of hand. It's, it's, it's not a bad point. It's not a bad point. Um, I realized I didn't do my awesome thing of the week, technically. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's above this. It's above this. Yeah, I, I kind of skipped the, skipped over it. Um, so I finally, finally got around and started poking around with the Adobe programs on the iPad, right? Um, and one of them I got to poke. I, I love that there's like these little extension-y ones. Like, like not, not the way that like and I haven't found these other ones because I, I I thought I remember there being like swatches and and, and there's a palette one where yeah, there's like can, palettes like, and stuff. I'm, I haven't I haven't come across those yet, but there's ones there's like there's one for Premiere, like one called Premiere Clip, and it looks like a very simple iMovie ish <laughs> version of Premiere. And the whole idea with any of these, and there's I think there's the one uh, I think there's one called Curve. I think it was called. Um, hold on, and I haven't gotten too much into them yet. There's Ravel, and then there's Adobe Snapshot. Um, also, uh, on top of this, we actually have a story uh, in the rundown. Um, Lightroom has a version on the Android phone now. So, Ooh. yeah. Uh, so, But the one that I really dug was called Photoshop Mix. And, and the cool thing with any of these, if you do use the, the, the Photoshop Premiere, uh, I'm sorry, the Adobe Premiere <laughs> Clip, the heck, uh, or, or this, uh, or anything like this, uh, and you're in Creative Cloud, it, it's like what you expect out of Office 365 or Drive, and I'm not used to something being to work cohesively in an Adobe product after all these years. I'm, I'm not. I'm like, the round, uh, if, geez, what did I use to round trip? You, uh, Macromedia did this really well, because you used to be able to round trip uh, a photo of, of something in, uh, what was it, Fireworks, and and back when we did in- image maps and images and slicing and tables and, and you could pull it over in the Dreamweaver and and it worked really well, uh, as well as that those methods did at the time. Um, but again, a Photoshop Mix is the one that that really kind of caught my eye that I got to dive into. First of all, uh, here, here's the page there for you guys on video. Um, it's in the App Store again for iPad. There's actually it, it does it is uh, compatible with the iPhone, but it, it's one of those you need that screen real estate, right? Um, so it, it does some pretty simple things. So I, I imagine if I had a picture and I can pull in again, all my pictures, uh, in my iCloud, uh, as well as in my creative cloud. So if I was something I was working on in Photoshop or I have a photo collection up on creative cloud, I can bring it in. So it's really nice that it doesn't really matter what you keep it in. Um, at least in those options. Um, 
so uh, combining photos, enhancing, sharing, et cetera. Um, the cool thing that caught my eye, uh, one thing they always used to do with um, a lot of graphics was like cutting people out, right? Especially like pictures of wrestlers and their roster pictures, right? When I used to do the website for a wrestling uh, company. And, 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 and you, know, you take, for me, it's, it's the pen tool and you go and you cut around the guy and everything like that. And, 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 and this is one that I did, and I'll, I'll throw up the video here. So I took my picture, and this is just a random picture, uh, random selfie. I, I like to send my wife selfies to remember what I look like at work. Um, you know, low light, everything like that. And the picture behind is actually Ghirardelli's when we were out in San Francisco uh, a few weeks ago. So you can actually go in, and their method, let's see if I can separate these here real quick. And you can see, uh, see more edits. I can't get into it too big, um, but it's a really like I cut that picture out pretty much just with my finger here on the iPad and it looks pretty clean. And I'll actually share this out on Twitter so you guys can see it um, a little more clearly as well. I mean, put in the, the put in the uh, description as well, but uh, it, it's, it's really nice. It, it's uh, we, can, we can throw the, uh, you know, you can throw your Instagram looks. It's like it's like Instagram on steroids, basically. Um, it works really well. I, I actually, you can actually see I can move my, myself around on there and position it uh, wherever I want to. Uh, really powerful. It actually recommended that I don't use an iPad 3, like, you know, for some of these um, features. So, I, but I didn't see, at least for this function, didn't seem to slow down too much. It seemed to work. I'm sure if I, if I add a lot of adjustments and crops and, and, and edits on top of that, it'll, it'll start having to process a bit more and I'll probably run into some trouble. Um, but generally, uh, uh, definitely go check it out. Uh, I don't know if you can use it if you don't have a Creative Cloud account. I honestly don't know. Um, but if you, if you do have that kind of stuff, um, it, you're definitely going to get more out of it. Um, because it keeps it keeps it in like a Photoshop format, and all your layers are there, right. and everything's everything's intact, right? Like you're talking about the round trip, right? And you know what? That's something else. That's something else that I actually have not looked at because I haven't I haven't actually opened it up like on a computer because that should be saved in my cloud. Yes. So it should sync to any other. So I could be taking pictures with my phone, doing these little edits, maybe going ahead and maybe tweeting them, Instagramming them, whatever I want to do. Um. <coughs> Wants an update to my Creative Cloud, uh, and then if I need to do something that's like, well, let's take these pictures and do something more high end. All those edits, my cutouts are already there. Perhaps you know, I, I think that's that's a really cool set, and that's that's Adobe like really finally kind of delivering on on those kinds of promises too. So um, really cool to see them like between this and and, and Alex uh, Alex Cars ca talking about the the Photoshop streaming. Uh, Adobe's a progressive company, you know, after all these years, and they're catching up. And, 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 and uh, I think they got a really cool cloud product going on right now. So, All right. On that note, I want to give a shout-out to our sponsor. Oh, wait, wait. Right here. Hey, hold on. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Right there. Making Uncle Crappy jealous. Right there. Uh, Look at those turned pepperonis. Some of them pepperonis. Mm. I am so freaking hungry. Um, oh, oh, drink your beer, man. It's all right. It's all right. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. Slice on Broadway. Over sliceonbroadway.com. They're supporting Pittsburgh podcasting and Sorgatron Media and awesome things with some awesome pizza for our guests. It is, it, it is, it is, it is awesome pizza. Oh, man. Yes, yes. You've been there for our Pizza Pal mm -hmm. throwdowns mm -hmm. where we'll go and and order have, have like maybe eight of us and we'll order like several of their gourmet pies and it's just so good um they're sliceonbroadway.com you can check them out uh they're on instagram they're social media inclined of course um uh but uh have, have you been to the one in carnegie i've been have to the, i have been to the one in carnegie actually Oh, see, there's a, there's a whole thing there, and this this works into the beer thing. Mm -hmm. With uh, a friend of mine who used to work at Penn uh, has opened a, 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 a last year opened a meadery in Carnegie, and then there's slice on Broadway in Carnegie, and I, and these two these two things have to come together at some point. This is what I'm thinking. <laughs> That'll be awesome. So soon, soon. There's actually soon. a charcuterie uh, up the hill from me here. Um, really? Yeah. 
Yeah, they, I don't mm. know when their hours are. They had lunch, then they didn't have lunch oh, is anymore. That, is that a, a, a crested, crested yeah. duck? Crested that, duck. Okay. They, they yeah. operate out here. I know. I know a lot of their big business comes out of um, the public market, the Pittsburgh public market yeah. out there in the Strip. That's, that's how I do them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, this is their base right, right up the hill from me, up by the light. So, uh, but check them out. They're here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Of course, Carnegie PA down on Main Street and here on the tracks in Beachview. So if you're taking that T on the red line, you can jump out. Uh, uh, I don't know what stop that is and go check it out. Um, but uh, it's called the pizza stop. <laughs> What's that? They should call it the should, pizza stop? Yeah, that's what, the, that's what it should be. There's nothing else over there, so, so why yeah. not, right? What's that, John? I think it might be the Broadway stop. It might be. Actually, it might be. It might be. Yeah. Um, but no, go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, abnormal obsession with pizza, and we can completely re- completely relate to that with our abnormal obsession with podcasting. Uh, so go check them out, friends of the show. All right, let's get into some news. Uh, Chilla, um, I don't want to feel like that I just gave you a dud, but I'm actually really excited about this news. Um, Which... Google Glass experiments are done. Yeah. They're done. It's not an experiment. <laughs> We're not... We're not guinea pigs anymore, Sheila. But. But. You're not getting any more updates. I'm sorry. But. It is what it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, okay. So, basically, and I hate, I hate a really good conversation. I think, I think Doug put this on uh, Google+. Plus. No, no. I'm sorry. Matt. Matt Nero um, um, was talking about this on Google+. Plus about the the horrible headline running about saying Google Glass is dead, RIP. You know, all these overblown things. I got the email. I got the Explorer window. I forwarded to you, Chilla. Yeah, Do you have thought... any sense that Google Glass is in trouble? No, it's definitely not in trouble. I mean, no. they, they, they put it under the, the guy that was running Nest. Yeah, I mean, this is all good he, news. This is all good news, and I have a feeling that they're on the brink of whatever uh, it is. Uh, what, whatever they're doing next is right around the corner. Mm-hmm. Can, I, now, can I can I take a second to apologize on behalf of my profession because we we, we got that awfully awfully wrong. <laughs> and it's not everybody. I mean, it's not everybody. Uh, I mean, I got engaged like last week when they when they said Windows Windows Seven was dead. <laughs> because it fell out of mainstream support. I'm sorry. I, I I'm still. How many <laughs> XP machines am I running here? Um, it's live and well and very useful to me. Um, but no, they said the experiments are done. There will be no more updates. We are shuttering the Explore program. Your 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 class is completely usable. You're just not getting any more updates. That's it. Um, like I said, and the experiment right. and the the uh, beta and the testing and getting your stories is pretty much done. Side note, and this was a note in a lot of the stories, but um, um, the the I, was Google Glass for Enterprise is the program still going strong. There's still people out there using it for surgery, you know, and I think those I think those are the more key places. What are we? What was I just complaining about that before we did our tech swap? It has not been updated for years, like as far hardware wise, and mm-hmm. I'm talking about form factor wise, right? We did get a, a spec update, right? Well, we got a, you got an OS update too, because they took it to KitKat when KitKat right. came right. out. Um, and there's already news about um, you know, uh, Intel is going to uh, probably provide the chip for the next, next iteration. I'm hoping it'll well, be smaller. I think, that's the, I think that's the big thing right there. Oh, yeah. I, I think the, and, and what I think that's going to solve is the battery life issue. Mm-hmm. So that, that's where I think it's right around the corner. They realized that the battery life wasn't what they wanted it to be. Um, and that's kind of like the next step in their evolution. It surprised me going to an Intel chip. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know Intel at CES made a lot of announcements about about advancements in mo- mobility and stuff like that. So I guess stay tuned. Um, the one thing that I hope they do is if if something were to break an app like an Android update, I would hope they would at least fix the existing Glass interface app. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess we'll have to stay tuned on, on what goes on with that. Right. Especially because th- they announced that there were going to be no more updates, but they were still selling them up through, I think, yesterday. Right, right. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that if it, if something breaks on it, not necessarily physical, like you dropped it in a pool or something, but if the app broke on Android, 
they, there would still be some kind of fix. And, and if Android has showed us anything with its user population, I'm sure people will figure out ways of, of patching or updating or it'll get a life of its own through the underground. Right. I mean, there's already, I don't know how many alternative OSs that were running on this, even in the first few months of it being available, uh, even even limited quantities. Like I saw Ubuntu running on it. Not, not that you would do anything with it because you have no mouse, but mm -hmm. you know, it, but you saw the desktop and everything when you, when you pulled it on there. Um, yeah, there's plenty of other uses that can be completely outside the box for those. Um, but no, I think nothing but good good news. Um, the feeling I'm hearing, and I and I kind of hope and agree with, is hopefully we'll get a consumer announcement at uh, Google I/O, for instance. Uh, I can't imagine this being dark for too long because people are going to forget about it after all that buzz. Um, and and they got and there was a lot of people that did a lot of really cool things with this thing. Um, and you know, if you look at CES, how many copycats are out there? Not that any are really broadly on the market, but there's other people tackling this issue, right? Um, my hope. Uh, Eventually, I'm hoping the next, probably not the next iteration, but I hope a very soon iteration is going to be something that, like a Google Glass, that would just clip on my glasses. That's what I'm hoping for. Like I, I know we're getting to that with the, with the, with the, with the contact lenses being the, you know, that's what we really want to get to, right? Um, that you don't even see it. But for rest of us, they're already uh, glasses wearers and everything like that. Or, or you know, you can be a designer thing if you're not a glasses wearer already. Not that weird band thing that we had going on. I understand the reason it was what it was, um, but it needs to blend in, you know. And honestly, option without the camera, I think would be okay. That's the biggest social. Yeah, I, mean, I guess yeah, that that would be okay for most people. I mean, that's the primary <laughs> reason that I wanted it yeah. was for that camera. So yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know, uh, 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 Mike. Do you have any other thoughts of this before we move on? No, you're good. You're okay. good. I, I'm so I, I I'm I, I I did. It's an unfortunate thing that, that the folks who work in the business I do, which the journalism, of course. Uh, the mainstream journalism sort of missed the, the premise of this. Right. Um, you know, you, you, you hear that, uh, supporters being shut down. It's like, oh, class dead. That's it. And it's failed after, what, two years? Um, and I'm, I, you know, when, when you read the fine print, you, you come and you see that that's not actually the case. And I'm, I'm really curious to see uh, where this is going to go from here. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of Google news. Uh, I think this is all kind of CES fallout -y kind of stuff. Uh, Project Aura, hands-on with Google's uh, latest modular smartphone prototype. We've talked about this before, but we got a lot of pictures um, from The Verge this week. Um, and it looks interesting. Again, boxy as all hell, uh, but still very, very intriguing. And, and this is the idea that we take our phones and we can actually swap out parts. In this picture, it's actually showing a version that all your pieces are actually photos, including like there's a, you know, there, there's a picture of you with your wife or something, right? That, that's kind of cool. Um, and it all kind of swaps out. Uh, one thing that kind of popped up here that that intrigued me out of it was 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 um, how they're kind of looking about approaching this modular system. Um, it, according to The Verge, they explained how you'll actually get um, your ba like segments off of your phone. So you can pull a component off of your phone while it's running. Um, and you can use specific, specific stuff like USB drives, and then even includes hot swamping of a dying battery with a fresh one while your phone is still running, according to The Verge. Um, they say that it can uh, currently maintain uh, for about 30 seconds, although they wasn't able to test it. Uh, the eventual goal is to give people one to two minutes to make the change. That's kind one of One minute's one minute enough. Yeah, yeah. So I got, I'd imagine the core phone it will have like a mini battery of some sort. Right. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that's also modular. So when it goes bad, it's easy. Um, I think it's a cool idea uh, if for something different for people that want something different with their phone. You know, obviously, this is not the most attractive piece of hardware out there. It's boxy it's blocky. They're trying their best to colorize it and customize it by the look of these pictures. But, uh, you know, the idea of that, oh, man, the, the LTE 2 is out. Well, I'll go get the LTE 2 chip, and now you're good to go, right? Well, And that's where I look at it, too. I mean, maybe you don't care about necessarily a bigger screen, but you want the faster processor. Right. Or let's look at it this way. I mean, I've run SD cards through the laundry by accident, mm -hmm. and they still function just fine. So let's say you drop your phone in water, 
and oh man, I ruined everything. Well, maybe the memory with all your pictures on it can then be plugged in somewhere else. So you can just pull that piece off and plug it directly into a computer or pull that piece off and plug it into another phone. Um, the interesting thing that I'm, that'll also be kind of cool is, let's say you want to update all of the hardware except for your file system. Now you can think about upgrading, think about when you go get a new phone and you have to copy over all your contacts and you have to reset up this and reset up that. Now you're just taking everything, you're taking the memory module and plugging it into your new phone and boom. You have all new hardware with that, with, with everything intact and you just keep on moving on. Right. I, I think it gives it, I think it gives you a lot of people a lot more room to upgrade to your point components like an LTE chip or something like that. I think it's going to be a cool option and uh, maybe a, a different kind of market option, you know, too. So, I mean, it, for, for the it, tinkerers, you know, it's yeah. going to be great. It's, but I don't think it's a U.S. thing no. origin, initially. No. no. Puerto Rico or something. Puerto Rico. <laughs> They're technically America. Um, Google also um, is talking about investing a billion dollars in SpaceX and uh, a satellite internet plan. Um, and that's the note for the wrong story. There we go. Um, but yeah, apparently they're looking, they want to put, I think it was like 70 or 80 satellites uh, about uh, 750 miles up and just there will be persistent internet everywhere. So we're going to reconnect the rest of the world that doesn't have internet. So I guess they're going to get every level of the stratosphere. Like, well, we'll have balloons and we'll have satellites and you won't even, yeah, you won't be out of internet anywhere. Um, it feels like I'm going to get internet sitting on a plane that doesn't have Wi-Fi at this point. Uh, if it gets this hold, on, hold on a little bit longer, Nebraska. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, I, I, hey, again, this crazy futuristic moonshotty stuff, uh, literally in this case, I, I think. Um, and they don't have to worry about landing a rocket on a boat, so they'll be fine. Uh, this Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, this is such a frustrating thing for me that, that, that we would have to we would have to resort to to, to balloons and satellites <laughs> to, 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 to catch up with with the rest of the planet but that makes sense though you right know? wait wait, wait. Uh, Are I, you... I know I, I know we're, we're much larger than, than than almost everybody and 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 and, and it's expensive to, to to get uh you know like fiber to to, to a lot of places <sighs> but come on. You know, it's, we've we've been doing this for a long time. Can't can't we get high speed? It, it, is it really that difficult? Well, are to, we to get high speed high speed internet to to, is, to to everyone? Are we talking about America? or Are we talking about like the Australian outback? Like that's yeah, that's, that's what I thought it was everywhere. That's my thought is, is you connect those places and the third world countries and and the places that you can't string up with fiber yeah. everywhere, right? Yeah. Like I, yeah. I think because I mean you're not gonna they won't run cable to my dad's house because there's only like three people on the road. Right. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you know, can you imagine them running fiber to all those people? Right. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I think that's the bigger thing. And I wonder if this is, this is Google's chance to go after countries that censor them. Cause mm -hmm. now you don't have someone blocking. You're bathing content. China with unblocked internet mm -hmm. on top of everything that they can't do anything about for Cause I don't, um, I'm sure we're not to that point, right? Where are we? Are we policing the skies at this point? You know, uh, satellites. I don't, I don't think not yet. Not, no. We're close, but not yet. No, uh, it's uh, this is one of those things that could get us to that point. They're gonna say, no, no, your your satellites don't fly over our country. They're big enough; they can kind of do that. Um, but uh, still, that that's uh, it's it's really intriguing. It's really intriguing, and, and is. is this something that comes? I mean, this could be a 20 year down the line thing. Actually, honestly, it's probably not even a 20 year down the line thing. We already have satellites that do internet. Mm -hmm. You can get mm -hmm. a dish, and mm -hmm. it kind of works. Don't FaceTime your dad on that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's rough. Don't, 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 don't. That do delay, that. and also you're you're not going to be playing Call of Duty on that thing. The latency, because it's got to go all the way up and back, right? But still, he has access more mm -hmm. than he ever would mm -hmm. otherwise. And mm -hmm. now, uh, get you know, and I don't know how they would deliver this. Do you need a special modem, special antenna? Uh, how does that work? 
probably very similar to what happens now. They're just making kind of a giant mesh network of this instead of, yeah, just make sure you point it at the south sky and you're good to go. Um, and maybe it's something that's not line of sight. You never know. So interesting. Um, <laughs> hey, AT AT and T. Uh, even though you know, uh, you know, hey, who's on AT and T here? Michelle, you're. I am. You're you're on AT and T. Oh, everybody's on AT and T here. Do you really have problems with AT and T anymore? Like, are we past this? I think in our market, for the most Is part, we're past this. I don't know about other markets, but I will say, I don't have a problem with crowding per se. Right. I do have a lot of dead spots on my way to and from work. Okay. But interestingly enough, I will say that those dead spots are also experienced by other major carriers like Verizon. Right, right. And, and, I, would, I would say I, I don't have a Verizon device any longer. I had one when I was working in my old job. Um, and, and I thought AT&T's coverage overall – and this is this is just a, this is a, a micro thing. This is right where I am, Beaver County, uh, you know, Allegheny County. Overall, AT and T did a better job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, so, for uh, what that's worth. Well, apparently, there there I, I found this article. I think this was a CES thing as well, um, uh, over on Engadget about how uh, AT and T is going to deliver TV and war over the crowded LTE network. Now. And they're showing here, showing some AT&T LTE broadcasts of ESPN with, hey, Ohio State there, Mike, against Oregon. How about that? Um, so they say that they are going to allocate a portion of its spectrum resources to deliver specific content to users without any compromises, like crappy video quality or anything. And it can do that by uh, sending the same stream of content to multiple devices all at once. Rather than on a one to one basis. So it's broadcast. It's pushing a stream, much like your broad your cable or your uh, broadcast antenna. That stream is going out all the time, regardless. You just tune into it, right? Um, what do you what do you guys think about this uh, as an option, I guess? Chilla? We we've, we've seen this before and I'm trying to remember who the carrier was that did this. It may have been AT and T. Well, wasn't there like a, a startup company that was using some kind of spectrum like this to do their own TV service? I well, and here I remember uh, probably seven years ago when Heroes was new to TV, and I was stuck working every night at work. Um, somebody had an AT and T feature phone, and the feature phone you could actually watch a subset. I remember of, those of local channels. Moby TV. Uh, it was an, it was an app on the feature phone. I don't I don't remember, but right, I, right. and I'm pretty sure it was AT and T that did this before. But it, and it, to your point, it was the same type of thing where it was broadcast always on. It wasn't like a DVR. There was no on demand. Mm -hmm. um, but and it worked, it, and it worked well. Um, even where in the building I'm in, the, the steel building downtown, there's poor reception, and it's it's not due. Well, it's due to the the way the building was made and the fact that a lot of the floors are above the antennas. Mm -hmm. And when you think about an antenna and cell service, the antenna broadcasts down. So to get a lot of reception in that building, the, the it actually has to, the signal bounces down off the ground and back up. Um, but anyway, but, but even in our building, the video, I would watch heroes every, I think it was Monday night and with, with, zero issue it was it was it just um, uh broadcast channels yeah it was primarily broadcast channels and a hand full of other channels that they must have had agreements with hmm. interesting. interesting like there was no i don't think we got usa or tbs or anything it does like feel that, like but... doesn't it feel like 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 hey, these guys are always you know, when we talk about verizon before and there's actually a story in here i don't know if we'll get to about verizon wanting to put devices in the car that run on their network, right? Um, that like an OnStar kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They want to tackle more than just their phone market. And, and TV, you know, you're saying a feature phone did this. And, and I remember those TV options on those phones and flip phones and stuff like that. Uh, they, yeah, they, they're going to keep poking at that market with these new these new things. I don't know if this is going to catch on. Verizon seems to have a pretty good foothold of the NFL on a Verizon phone, but. Um, and maybe that's I something. Think, maybe that's something I, they're trying to trying to get into a similar deal here, uh, maybe for college football. You know, um, but 
uh, yeah, they just want it's just another reason for you to hopefully lock you into to their provider or bring you over. I could see this definitely catching on with the younger generations, the YouTube generations. Where That's true. They they just want to. They're not going back to a TV. No. Um, they're they're hitting YouTube. They're hitting any kind of content they can find online. Um, to me, this is this is a way to chip away at that at that population and get them into some type of TV um, that's more real time and less streamed or Netflixed or Hulu or whatever. Mm. Um, I could definitely see this hey, when for, you... for, for a kid or for a business person on the go. I do not see why they would not use this service. It's interesting that, that you would bring up uh, the, the thing about uh, about sports because, and we, we have this on our list here in some place, um, uh, NBC uh, saying it's going to uh, open openly stream the Super Bowl, including the, the halftime show, which I, I'm, I'm not sure that it's a big deal or not. Um, Katy Perry, man, versus, versus Verizon, which which has the rights. NBC can can stream it on on any devices except except for these because Verizon has the rights to stream on these exclusively. Hmm. Um, and it's 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 kind of an interesting uh, battle with you know with, that we will see in a couple weeks. Um, uh, and, and, and I'm 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 always curious. We I've talked to you we've talked to you about this on the show before about uh, being a potential cord cutter if not for sports coverage. Um, and so I'm I'm sort of encouraged about how that how that part of the of the Super Bowl is going to work. Um, you know, I, I can watch on NBC. I can watch if I had a Verizon device. I could watch on on a little tiny screen like this if I wanted to. Um, but just in the, in this in this context, it's, it's it's kind of an interesting real life example that we're going to see in a couple of weeks. Right. Exactly. Um, and then I, I wanted to touch on here real quick also um, Facebook at work. I think, and and I don't know what your guys' thoughts of this are. Um, I think this is huge. Mm -hmm. I think there's a market for this. Um, there's been companies trying to solve this problem. Um, as the workforce gets more geographically diverse and as um, employees continue to move from company to company, the, the one thing I notice is it's extremely hard to find someone with subject matter expertise when you don't know what group to go talk to or where to look, um, especially for managers that are new to a company as they come in and don't know everyone. I don't see this being the Facebook, the, how we think about Facebook, where you know I friend my family or I friend my friends. I think this is the new way that it's it's the LinkedIn at work kind of thing, mm -hmm. but private to that company, um, and it will foster collaboration across the enterprise. I, I could see the the whole group mentality. I could see they need to have a little more in the profile area, um, but when you look at your likes type area, well, movies you like, TV shows, whatever. I'm replacing that with I know X, Y, and Z. Um, maybe I know SQL and VB and Perl or something like that. When you, it's also going to help you cultivate your employees. That where you hire someone based on you're looking for a SQL developer, and you didn't even touch on the fact that that they know three other coding languages or you look for someone in Oracle and you're putting in a bunch of SQL, Microsoft SQL stuff. I think this, this is huge, especially because the most important or the hardest thing to do is train someone how to use something. Um, everybody kind of knows Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a household yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. We, my, my employer uses uh, Google based stuff. And it's sort of the same thing, you know. It, it, it's sort of ubiquitous, so everyone understands how that how, how it works. Right. Um, but uh, I, I'd be curious. To, I, I will be curious to see what this looks like. Um, and I think it has potential to, to gain a lot of traction be, because you know, 
18 billion people use Facebook and, and, and you know, everyone understands how the platform works and, and what it looks like. Right, right. Um, it, it's better than a SharePoint or something like that. Um, and, uh, and it's bigger companies, right? I mean, this isn't like th this is like the bigger in disclosed companies that you guys work for, right? Like I can't see this being a startup thing. Um, like that maybe. Yeah, a I, I don't see that. I don't see it so much as being a startup thing. I, I would, I would envision Google's products are, are better served so, for so that type of thing. This, in, so um, th this, this is like this to is encourage like that, that that inter office sharing, blogging kind of idea, that right. information sharing, right? So information sharing, how? But it's the one of the things you look at when you think about and and. and Mike, I'd be or Uncle Crappy, I, I'd be definitely be interested in your your what you experience at your job. But so you 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 know who you want to contact, mm -hmm. and you look at your corporate directory, mm -hmm. and you have a name and a phone number, and potentially a mail stop, and maybe an email address. Um, but when you don't know who you need to contact, and you're trying to find someone that knows something on a specific topic. That's where I see this in, in that type of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. I, I think um, the company that I work for actually uh, implemented the system that we have. Uh, they, they were smart about it. Um, it, it is easy, even if, if it's not people that, that I, I, I know immediately, it's easy to decipher addresses. It's easy, easy to reach people. Mm -hmm. um, and they've they had been in they have been insistent on, on sort of um, uh, making people uh, enter some information about you know who they are and what they and what they do. So I so it's it's not hard to find the, the people I need to. Um, the, the the platform and, and this but but this will be the same thing. I mean because people are are familiar with it and they're they're probably more people familiar with with the uh, Facebook kind of style platform than they are with the Google stuff. Um, this is this is going to be just because because it is so ubiquitous. This is going to be a, 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 a really intuitive thing for people to adopt. Um, and 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 uh, I, I, I think it's mm -hmm. I, I think it could be a big deal. Nice, nice. Well, on that note, hey, uh, Chilla, something big's happening tomorrow, right? Microsoft has a huge announcement that everyone's speculating, so I'm not going to add the spec to the speculation. Oh, come on. But Microsoft has an, <laughs> an all day, well, for the public, it's streaming starting at noon Eastern Standard, 9 a.m. Pacific. I'm going to guess that's going to go probably three hours, three, four hours. Um, but they've invited a slew of reporters and bloggers and tech people um, to this event and they've been told to pretty much block off I think like the 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, block so uh, I'm sure post the live stream um, there will be a lot more information coming out of the Seattle or Redmond areas so nice. stay tuned. Um, I don't think we're going to hear anything as far as enterprise. I don't think we're going to hear much in the enterprise, and I don't think we're going to hear about any um, flagship phones. But I think we're going to hear a lot about Windows 10 um, and maybe some Xbox stuff. I don't know. But like I said, I don't want to speculate too much, but I, I think it's going to be primarily consumer-driven. Right, right. I, I, know, I know the last announcement they had um the the people covering it were were kind of surprised how little enterprise that, that was discussed if any mm -hmm. so um it will be interesting lots of stuff going on hey around the network um the good morning cast uh which by the way in this last week we had some good talks i had i've been talking to myself no actually it's not just that because I, I i was actually uh uh people have been uh hit me back on Twitter and uh, about some of the topics we've been talking about. Uh, Google Glass Explorer program ending, I, I went on about that. Uh, WW Immortals I reviewed last week. I talked about some green screen video action uh, that we've been doing around here. Uh, but today I actually converted the show, since I'm recording down here anyways, um, to a video show. So much like the format that we kind of do here for Awesome Cast and all the other podcasts here on Tuesday nights, 
Um, we're just putting out the video version. I'm printing it up, actually combing my hair before I come down here. And um, and there you go. So go check that out. It's got a new YouTube channel. I'm still flushing it out a little bit, but you can get that at sorgatron.com. Also, some really cool things going on. Oh, hey, the other thing going on is there's a little video. You know how we talk about Yik Yak around here. Uh, but there's a little video that we made called What If Speed Dating Was Like Yik Yak? Uh, you can check that out as well at SoyaTronMedia.com. Um, I've been getting some pretty decent feedback on it. Uh, again, all shot right here in the studio on a green screen right over there. Uh, and we're hoping to do some more fun stuff like this, little kind of spot videos like this, uh, with uh, Will, uh, DJ Launchbox from Wrestling Mayhem Show, and PanelRiot.com, and of course, Dutters on that as well. Dutters. Around Dutter. town, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Startup Weekend Education Pittsburgh informal session happening at Alpha Lab Gear, January 27th. You can find the information for that over on meetup.com. And uh, I saw a tweet yesterday that there was only four seats left, but big fans of Tech Shop, I actually got to see it when we went to the Verizon event. Um, they're having a Bluetooth Android Arduino based app driven hardware session uh, class over there. So, uh, again, go find information on that at techshop.ws and look up their classes as well. Um, and this is actually happening like probably right now. Uh, but I had to mention this because I, I saw the title of this and it looks really intriguing. The DARPA Robotics Challenge in Baymax in Disney's Big Hero 6. This has happened, I believe, at Carnegie Mellon. Yep. Um, they're having a meetup talking about robotics and, uh, and uh, somehow Big Hero 6 is again looped in there. I thought that was a really cool thing that's happening here in town. Uh, so, so there you go. Could, could we get a Baymax robot? Are we going to have the big huggable robot? Um, but uh, but no, it's some fun. And that's also it's uh the that's the ACM Pittsburgh meetup group. I'm sure they'll have some other cool stuff coming up too. Uh, so they had 65 people tagged to go to that thing tonight. So they're they're doing pretty good. Um, so uh, if you if there's anything happening around town, uh, in Pittsburgh or, or otherwise, uh, that you guys want to get out there again, we're fairly Pittsburgh based here. I want to show hey, there's cool stuff happening in a little town like this, uh, especially here in Pittsburgh. Um, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll share that around. So, um, so with that, uh, just a reminder, Hey, we're here every Tuesday. If you want to join us live in the chat room, like our fine folks, like Alex cars out in California wheels. Um, uh, no, that's me. That's my name. That's my name. Uh, just for other people, Chachi, <laughs> Buddy Landell popping in there, uh, Juggalo John, uh, all hanging out and uh, talking tech with us on there and giving, and, uh, and sometimes asking questions about why their phone doesn't work. Uh, we're going to have to get the Google guy on here. Uh, uh, but you can join us here at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, live.sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at AwesomeCast. Find AwesomeCast on Facebook, Google+. And, of course, email your thoughts and stories to AwesomeCast at sorgatronmedia.com. Subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and Stitcher. And, of course, as always, a big thank you to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters for uh, doing the show notes and the uh, tweets all night. Uh, Chilla. He's at Chilla on the Twitters. Josh Chilla everywhere else. Yes. And there's two of me, so look oh, for no. the younger one. Oh. If, you, if you Google my name, it's <laughs> actually another John Chiller. I have a same, I have a similar issue. Um, I do not play the piano, and I'm also not a German <laughs> IT person. So, uh, Mike Pound. I don't know how many Mike Pounds there are, but this one's at Uncle Crappy on the Twitters. There are not many, and um, I, I, I tell you what, uh, uh, take a look at uh, Mike Pound PG uh, that uh, has, may or may not have hints as to where I work. Uh, the beer show that I was doing uh, at my uh, previous employer will be starting up again soon no. at, at my at my current employer, so so watch for that. Mike Pound PG, go check it. That was fun. I, I, I loved I loved your video part. Of course, uh, the proprietor of Newsbreak over there. That's not coming yes. back, is it? Uh, no, 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 no news break. <laughs> Actually, you got, uh, there, uh, I, the, some place that you may work at has been doing a lot of video over there. I saw a, a friend of yes. Yin's team, uh, yes. do, uh, doing some videos. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yes. cool to see them kind of ramping up that media thing over there. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. They're doing good stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Keep an eye on that. Just look up Pittsburgh newspapers and. The green one. The green one. The green and one. You'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> so with that, I'm Mike Slork at Sorgatron on the Twitter, SorgatronMedia.com, and everywhere else. Uh, and uh, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This 
show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.